Hello there, my fellow fans of desert fighting, and welcome to the third and final episode in my Talarn Desert Raiders miniseries. Today, we are gonna be talking about a few famous regiments and officers from these unique and formidable warriors, as well as a few books concerning them which I would like to recommend. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us get into it, shall we? And we shall start with a few notable regiments. The 3rd Regiment, also named the Desert Tigers. They fought in the Makarian Crusade, alongside the 4th and 5th Talarn Regiments. Subsequently, it was all but destroyed fighting under the command of the Imperial War Master Solon. On the planet of Kallistan, the regiment took part in a hard but successful war against human mutant rebels, receiving a commendation from the Inquisition. The 11th Regiment The Talarn 11th, together with the Talarn 220th Armored and the Talarn 31st Rough Riders, were dispatched to the Calixis Sector alongside many other Talarn regiments only months after the first call for reinforcements on the Spinward Front. However, due to the vagaries of warp travel, these three regiments have only arrived in the last few months. Their transit was delayed by disruptive warp activity, which saw them separated from their transport group and delayed by several years. Believed lost in the warp, when the three Talarn regiments emerged at the edge of the Kalf system, there was more than a little astonishment, particularly as the Talarn themselves have experienced a journey only eight days longer than expected. With reinforcements desperately needed, these regiments were immediately deployed on the front line, and the 11th Desert Raiders, known colloquially as the Dune Scorpions, have since found themselves in a series of war zones, and recently serving as part of the infiltration mission deployed to Mesa. Particularly known for their proficiency with ambush tactics, the Dune Scorpions have claimed many kills, seldom allowing their foes to see who was attacking them. The 12th Regiment Fought in the Cursus War on Talarn in the 40th millennium. When the Talarn discovered a mysterious chaotic artifact during the construction of an arterial tunnel on their homeworld, they unearthed the so-called Cursus of Algonar, a legendary mythical gateway of the gods, which actually served as a potent warp gate into the Immaterium. This discovery forced the Eldar to act, and they attacked the Talarn in full force. Before the Cursus could be sealed, however, the gateway opened, and the curses poured the indescribable demons of the warp into reality. The human commander called a truce and worked in concert with the Eldar forces to turn back and defeat the gibbering horde of demons. The Eldar departed in peace afterwards, and the people of both races exchanged promises of friendship, a true rarity in normal interactions between mankind and other races. The 16th Regiment they fought the Eldar on the desert world of Holon Prime in the 35th millennium. Having great difficulty dealing with the speed and maneuverability of the Eldar forces, a Talarn commander devised an ingenious way to overcome this disadvantage. He ordered the regiment's Chimera transports to have their armor stripped down, giving his desert raiders a highly mobile transport to carry them across the vast dunes of Holon Prime. The advent of this newly designed vehicle was instrumental in the defeat of the Eldar forces. Since this engagement, the Talarn 16th Regiment's 1st Patrol Company has been known as the Grave Diggers. The 17th Regiment Fought during the Taurus Campaign in the 41st millennium. The Talarn 17th had the honor of being the first Imperial troops on the ground, following the destruction of the planet's orbital defense facilities by the Raptors' Space Marine Chapter. The regiment was completely destroyed during the retreat from the Tarosian capital city of Tarokane. Many of the survivors from the regiment had been scattered by the defending Tau forces and were captured. They were condemned to forced labor by working the mines of Taros, 
the few survivors which managed to escape aboard the evacuation ships were eventually reassigned to the Talarn 331st Regiment. The Taurus campaign ultimately ended in failure for the Imperium and a great victory for the Tau Empire. The 35th Regiment The Talarn 35th is a veteran unit that is part of a reconnaissance regiment assigned to the world of Hervara, located in the Spinward Front. This Imperial War Zone is centered in the subsector of the Calixis Sector known as the Periphery. At the time of their deployment, they were initially well supported by a company of Sentinels and a full company of Rough Riders mounted upon Mukali. After a year of deployment without support, the mounts for these forces, both reptilian and mechanical, have suffered great losses. In spite of this, the Desert Raiders have shown no tendency to restrict their activities. Of the three Imperial regiments on Hervara, they had the greatest success against the natives, while also suffering the most severe losses. The 54th Regiment The Talarn 54th fought alongside the Steel Confessor's Space Marine Chapter. This chapter is known for being utterly intolerant of physical and mental weakness in others. A tragic incident occurred when the chapter actually destroyed the Talarn 54th for its quote-unquote failure to achieve objectives. The 89th Regiment They fought in the Anukani campaign in the 39th millennium. They were also one of the infantry companies which took part in the Taurus campaign later on. The 96th Regiment They fought during an Imperial campaign on the forge world of Demaris Tertiary, assisting Imperial forces against the massive Orc War. The 331st Regiment They fought in the Taurus campaign in the 41st millennium. This newly formed regiment managed to emerge relatively unscathed from the failed campaign against the Tau. After this conflict, they received survivors from both the Talarn 17th and 89th regiments as replacements for their losses. The 441st Regiment They fought in the Fall of Medusa V campaign in the 41st millennium. They were stationed alongside the heavily fortified trench line known as the Mortis Line. Along with the Talarn 442nd, the 441st was sent into the desert beyond their line to investigate strange reports of unidentified creatures, which turned out to be a war of orcs. The 892nd Regiment This was created from the remnants of two decimated famous Talarn units, the 82nd Shantani of the Dust, and the 351st Dervish Blades of the Imperium. Next, I would like to mention a couple of famous armored regiments. The 3rd Armored Regiment They also fought during the Taros Campaign. The 3rd Regiment was effectively destroyed during that action, having lost all their combat vehicles and much of their equipment during the retreat from the Tarosian capital of Tarokane. The Talarn 3rd Armored Regiment would be reconstituted in the aftermath with the survivors of their regiment and the 12th Armored Regiment. The 9th Heavy Tank Regiment, also called the Blue Devils. The 9th Heavy Tank Regiment is known for using primarily Bane Blade Super Heavy Tanks. They paint their vehicles in a desert yellow with a sky blue camouflage. The commanders of this regiment are known for riding in the turret, exposing themselves to a panoramic view of the battlefield, waving their curved chainswords to inspire their men to greater courage. Last but not least, a few notable Talarn warriors and officers. General Barim Abbas Current regimental commander of the 17th Talarn Regiment, General Barim Abbas deployed as a part of the 4621st Imperial Guard Army. They fought alongside elements of the Adeptus Astartes to reclaim the Imperial desert mining world of Taros during the ill-fated Taros campaign. Colonel Israel Honor Castilian Colonel Castilian is the current commanding officer of the 96th Talarn Desert Raiders. 
During an imperial campaign on the forge world of the Maris Tertiary, he was taken prisoner by one of Warbas Gorgutz's knobs, Skiva. As he was being dragged away into a cage, Castilian managed to grab a dropped plasma pistol and fire it, killing two orc knobs. Unfortunately, the weapon shorted out before he could use it against Skiva. Eventually, he escaped captivity, after playing a huge role in destroying the Greenskin forces on the Maris Tertiary. Colonel Nisri Dakar Dakar was the commanding officer of the Talarn 829th Regiment and the former commanding officer of the Talarn 331st Regiment. Colonel Fiora Javed Colonel Javed is the current commanding officer of the 11th Talarn Desert Raiders, called the Desert Scorpions. A calm and careful woman, she is unwilling to act rashly or strike without considering the terrain, the enemy, and a variety of other factors. Her caution is not due to fear, as her men are quick to point out that to anyone who dares imply cowardice. But a result of a keen tactical mind, unclouded by vainglory or hubris, and their regiment's victories are a testament to the value of such an approach. Major Lauren Alfastra Major Alfastra commands the 35th Talarn Desert Raiders a veteran unit that is part of a reconnaissance regiment assigned to the world of Hervara. At the time of their deployment against the orcs and secessionists present on that planet, they were initially well supported by a company of sentinels and a full company of rough riders mounted upon Mukali. After a year of deployment without support, the mounts for these forces, both reptilian and mechanical, have suffered serious losses. In spite of this, Alfastra and the Desert Raiders have shown no tendency to restrict their activities. Of the three guard regiments on Hervara, they had the greatest success against the natives, while also suffering the greatest losses. Captain Al-Rahim Al-Rahim is an able commanding officer of the 3rd Talon Regiment but entrusted the more mundane duties of company command to his subordinates as he liked to lead from the front. Captain Al-Rahim has a natural affinity for tactical command, never faltering in the heat of combat. His calm demeanor and use of initiative is the envy of many an aspiring general. Stalking his prey from afar before awaiting the most opportune moment to strike, Al-Rahim leads his warriors in well-planned attacks. This Talarn Desert Raiders commander doesn't employ the standard tactics of charging the enemy head-on employed by his contemporaries, but instead employs cunning and patience. When the Desert Tigers strike, they do so suddenly, then melt away before the enemy could retaliate. Captain Al-Rahim employed these tried-and-true methods against the elusive Eldar during the battle for the ruins of Esko's Moon fighting a protracted guerrilla war which utilized this hit-and-run style of warfare. The Talarn commander and the hand-picked platoon of his desert tigers have trekked across the moon's equatorial continent to strike at the ruins lightly defended and supposedly unapproachable southern pass. Carefully constructing a crossfire for their erstwhile and elusive foes, Al-Rahim himself claimed the head of the autarch Kaliel, after springing his deadly trap. The man is a natural leader and a gifted linguist. He possesses the innate ability to instill respect and confidence using his charismatic charm and quick intellect. He has even been able to do this when fighting alongside other guard regiments allied with the Desert Tigers. Even those as fastidious as the Katakan jungle fighters who are known for their distrust and scorn of outsiders, have a high regard for Captain Al-Rahim. And finally, like I promised, I would like to recommend a few books concerning Talarn itself and the Desert Raiders. I am going to start with the Horus Heresy novella Talarn Executioner by John French. This is part of a set of Horus Heresy stories which concerns just the Battle of Talarn. So, if you're looking to read more about this event, you're in luck. 
In Executioner, we are given a glimpse of how Talarn looked and felt just before the Iron Warriors started bombing the hell out of it. Afterwards, we are presented with a really claustrophobic storyline from the perspective of the survivors who now have to rely on their tanks for safety from the radioactive areas above their shelters. It's a very gritty and well-written novella. However, be warned that it is also a very confusing story. I had read all the Horus Heresy novels up to the point when this was released, and I still felt a little confused at times. Next would be the longer novella, or shorter novel if you wish, Talarn Ironclad, also written by John French. Now this one is a bit more cohesive and easy to understand than Executioner, and that's all for the better in my opinion. It also features more perspectives, bringing even Primarch Perturabo himself into the mix for a little bit. Overall, a better package than Executioner was, in my opinion, but they're also kinda tied together, so I think you'd enjoy both if you're a Talarn fan. Next, we have three short stories in the form of Talarn Witness, Talarn Siren, and Iron Corpses. Now, these are quite different from one another, Witness telling of the damage assessment by the new Imperial Governor after the battle is over, Siren is set at the beginning of the battle, where a team of loyalists desperately try to find an astropath to send a request for aid, and Iron Corpses goes even further, telling the short tale of an Iron Warrior legionary trying to hijack a titan. The first two are written again by John French, and Iron Corpses by David Annandale. A significant note I would like to make here is that all these stories, apart from Iron Corpses, are available in the anthology novel simply titled Talarn, which was released a bit more recently. And with the Horus Heresy books out of the way, I would also like to recommend two more novels, in the form of The Traitor's Hand by Sandy Mitchell, which is a Cephas K novel, but one which also features Talarn regiments, and the Imperial Guard novel titled informatively Desert Raiders by Lucian Solban. I hope I pronounced that right. This one has a beleaguered Talarn regiment fighting desperately against the Tyranids on a desert planet. Doesn't get better than that if you're looking for Talarn action. And all this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about famous Talarn regiments and commanders, as well as my book recommendations. Would you enjoy serving in a Talarn regiment? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was enjoyable or informative to you, please consider clicking the like button and maybe subscribing for more content. If you'd like to help out my channel and keep it afloat, please check my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. I thank you kindly for watching and wish you all a pleasant day. The Emperor Protects